Hi, this is Alex from Bike Matters. I'm gonna run through our top 10 list of cafe racers on the market today. Kicking off the list at number 10 is a lightweight A2 option, which you may be surprised by. It's the Husqvarna Vitpillen 401. Now the Vitpillen is also available as a 701 option and a really nice Aero 701 model, which gives the iconic cafe racer front fairing a run out. But the Vitpillen 401 makes the list as a bit of a futuristic cafe racer option. The styling was influenced by cafe racers, but reimagined for modern riders. And you're given a classic cafe racer riding position with high tech modern design, with modern rider features like a slipper clutch, WP suspension, Bybury disc brakes, Bosch ABS, and ride by wire throttle. This is a very small bike and weighs in at just 148 kilograms dry. And when it's outputting 42 brake horsepower and 37 newton meters of torque, you get an extremely nippy ride. There is a premium price tag of £5,599 and whilst it is the cheapest bike on the list, it's undoubtedly a premium bike. It's also the smallest bike on the list. Great bike to start with though. Next at number 9 is the Kawasaki W800 Cafe. Brand new for 2019, Kawasaki is paying tribute to their classic 1966 W1 on the W800 Cafe. But there's a few modern twists. The LED headlight is a modern touch to the classic bikini fairing. The analog dash and twin chromed exhaust are classic cafe racer staples as well. Kawasaki are mixing classic with modern here to produce what I think is a great looking bike. It's not always all about looks though. The W800 Cafe is a 773 vertical twin and outputs 47 brake horsepower, so it's another A2 compliant cafe racer. It's five speed and weighs in at 223 kilograms. There's also a slipper clutch, ABS, and preload adjustable rear suspension. Now size is often a concern for me on cafe racers, but on this one we do have the Kawasaki Ergo Fit system, which means you can adjust the positioning of various parts like the handlebars, foot pegs, and seat to fit a range of rider sizes. For price, expect for around 9,000 pounds. The SV650X takes our number eight spot. It's essentially a regular SV650 dressed up to go to a cafe racer party with clip on bars, a front cowl and a new paint job. The SV650 itself is a very good base bike for both old and new riders and becomes a modern styled cafe racer that naturally ticks a lot of boxes at great value for money, just £6,599 new. Whilst a lot of these other bikes on the list are going for a more traditional style, the SV650X is happy to still look quite modern and as a result ends up looking quite unique. Powered by 645cc V-Twin with 75 brake horsepower output, so unrestricted it will need a full license, the SV650X has performance landing it in the middle of the power list. Now Suzuki do keep it quite simple for features here, but there's ABS, Suzuki's easy start system and low RPM assist system, which is all great for beginners. Consider this the cafe racer for newer riders who'd also like a bit of style. At number 7 is the Moto Guzzi V7 Free Racer. Originally released in Italy in 1967, it was re-released with the V7 Free range as a special edition for their 50th anniversary in 2017. The V7 Racer was one of three, including the Stone and Special, and represents Moto Guzzi's successful sports heritage. Winner of 15 world titles and 11 tourist trophies, powered by a V-twin 744cc engine that produces 52 brake horsepower, it's not quite a maniac on the road, much more of an elegant cruiser. Because it was produced as a special edition, attention to detail was paramount, and the V7 Free Racer was given the highest spec features Moto Guzzi could fit in. Fully adjustable suspension with Olin's rear shocks, switchable traction control, a satin finished chromium fuel tank with Rosso Corsa painted frame, and swing up. It really does look the part. Now you're not able to find this one brand new anymore, but it is definitely one to include on a cafe racer list, and you can still find the other V7s new on the market. You can find one of these for around £5,000 second hand if you do look hard enough though. At number six is the Ducati Scrambler Cafe Racer. Now one of the leaders of the recent retro revival craze, Ducati have played around with the top selling Scrambler range to bring out another new look for 2019. Many of the components from the Scrambler family are shared with this cafe race model, including the 803cc 73 horsepower engine, but it does have a few differences. Clip on bars and rear set pegs, of course. There's also slightly smaller 17 inch wheels with Pirelli Diablo Rosso tires and reconfigured cafe racer suspension. As is typical Ducati style, premium parts only here. Brembo brakes, preload adjustable Kayaba rear shock, 
Bosch cornering ABS and slipper clutch all are standard. I mean this bike looks the part, it's intimidating enough but it still has plenty of power to keep you entertained. Plus it's a Ducati, but that does mean a Ducati price tag, £9,950. Halfway through the list and at number 5, the Yamaha XSR900. For this spot we've gone with the XSR900 and when I was going through the customization options for one of these bikes online, if you put on the Cafe Racer low bars you're suddenly finding yourself looking at a brilliant modern Cafe Racer. Yamaha aren't always considered for modern Cafe Racers but the Abarth version of the same bike released back in 2016 and was Yamaha's first modern Cafe Racer release and it was absolutely stunning. Now given the same torque happy 850cc engine as the MT-09 with 113 brake horsepower on tap, power is of no concern here. There's also ABS, rider modes, switchable traction control and a slipper clutch as standard. Plenty of customization options available as well and this bike is sure not to disappoint. Whilst it is a bit mental for a beginner and traditionalists may prefer more of a retro style, for £8,999 you can get yourself an absolute rocket of the XSR900. It's one of my favourites on the list. Number 4, Norton Commando 961 Cafe Racer. Now I think Cafe Racer and a lot of people will say Norton. They're pretty much synonymous. The original Norton Commando first arrived in 1967 and this 961 is an absolute retro stunner perhaps the best looking on the list. And of course, Norton being a brilliant British brand as well, they had to be included. Now powered by a 961cc parallel twin motor with 79 brake horsepower and 90 newton meters of torque, it weighs in at just 188 kilograms. So expect a serious performance from this bike on the road. Premium components galore, right down to the twin dial dash as well. There's adjustable Olin's USD forks, rear shocks, Brembo brakes, and a clutch master cylinder. No expense has been spared here, but it's just an expense you'll be preparing to pay. £16,000 to call one of these your own. By the way, loads of accessories can be bought OEM, so original equipment manufacturer from Norton, to make it your own and give it that customization that you want. Now earlier I mentioned the retro revival movement and at number three is a great example of this as well. It's the BMW R9T Racer. Now the R9T is a hugely popular bike for BMW and they've brought out loads of different variations for it and the Racer being their answer for cafe races. With an aggressive riding position tucking you behind the stunning half fairing, this bike is no slouch at all. It's a twin cylinder 1170cc boxer engine, of course, outputting 116 newton meters of torque and 110 brake horsepower. It's six speed and shaft driven, and it gives you that unmistakable BMW boxer power. The race is a sport focused option and absolutely all about performance on the road. In fact, BMW even say it's far removed from the obsessive retro romanticism. Now, still expect all of the mod cons here. Switchable ABS, adjustable rear suspension, a twin disc at the front and single disc at the rear. The racer starts at £11,050. But for an extra £730, you can get the sport version. And that comes with heated grips, chrome exhaust, LED lights, spoked wheels. Really like this one, to be fair. At number two is the Royal Enfield Continental GT. Well known in the industry for making stunning retro machines at great prices, a resurgent Royal Enfield released the Continental GT to a great reception and have seen this bike sell good numbers in 2019. The bike is powered by a brand new 648cc parallel twin engine and has been tuned for a bit more grunt at low rev ranges, yet still fits in the A2 license category at 47 brake horsepower. The exhaust note sounds incredible as well thanks to that parallel twin engine and is definitely going to be turning heads. There's a few extras on this bike, but overall it's kept quite simple. Now you get Bybury brakes, which are of course the Brembo subsidiary, and Bosch ABS, and a fantastic slipper clutch, which you can really abuse apparently. Stunning colour options are on this one too. Now at £5,700, I don't think you can really go wrong with the Continental GT for an A2 friendly cafe racer. So here we are, our number one cafe racer. 
For the top spot on the list, we've gone for the Triumph Thruxton 1200, one of the original pioneers of the cafe racer movement in 1960s England. Now, reborn as a modern classic cafe, the Thruxton 1200 is powered by a parallel twin Bonneville engine that puts out 95.6 brake horsepower. Triumph are really focused on producing a powerful cafe racer here for the modern ton-up boys. It outputs 62% more torque than the previous Thruxton at 112 Nm of torque and it's got a tweaked Bonneville engine so it gives you more power at both the low end and throughout the rev range. Triumph has somehow also kept the weight nice and low at 206 kilograms for a big bike. Now available in two options, the standard Thruxton 1200 is 11,000 pounds and the R model 12,400. You get loads of features on these. Now rider modes of course, ABS, switchable traction control and ride by wire. The Fruxton R Deluxe model gets you a little bit more. So you get Brembo brakes, adjustable Showa upside down forks and adjustable Olin's rear shock. Rosso Corsa tires as well and overall it's a stunning cafe racer. It gets our number one spot not just because of the history but because it's an absolutely stunning bike and one that fits right at the top as it was in the past. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think is the best cafe racer down below in the comments. And if I missed your favorite off the list, then let me know. If you are looking for insurance for a cafe racer, it's worth giving Lexham Insurance a call because they do have a cafe racer scheme that can give you a competitive quote. They also do other motorcycles and scooters as well. So it's well worth giving them a try. Just let them know the bike matters have sent you as well. Whilst you're there, I'd appreciate if you can subscribe and like the video and hit the bell icon if you want so you can be notified of all of our latest videos when they come out. Cheers.